like messes up. Okay, we're live. Um, can I get a motion to restart the meeting? Motion to restart the meeting. Can I get a second? Okay. okay, all in favor of starting the meeting, please go to the reactions tab and hit the raise hand feature. If you're voting against or if you're abstaining, then please privately message me. Okay, um, so the meeting is back in motion um, and we are gonna start with uh, Michael's presentation. You can take it away. Yeah, thank you so much for having me. Um, just to introduce myself, my name is Michael. I'm the co-director of SARU and I'm here to talk about a project that we've been working along with ARSH, WGMC and also the CHU office and the Office of LGBTQ Life. So essentially we, are doing this really great thing. Um, and it's supposed to be a survivor support platform. Um, it's a website um, hosted by Chu, which will be paid by Chu. And it's essentially just provides two services. It's relationship education and like sexual health education. And then it also has a blog component. Um, the blog component is there so that survivors can then share any information or just their stories and their experiences here on campus. Now I'm going to go through each thing really quick um, just to kind of give some context. So we started working on this website, I believe, back in November. Um, and we've had regular meetings with you and admin and OIE um, just to discuss logistics and to make sure that everything is okay and protect, like protecting identities of survivors and also making sure that the blog portion is secure and safe for everyone involved. We're really trying to just make a place for survivors again to be able to share their stories, be able to share their experiences and create a community, which is like desperately needed here at Hopkins. I'm sure everyone's familiar with the statistics, but um, undergraduate women here on Hopkins face a higher um, rate of you know physical sexual violence than the national average. And I think for queer students, it's like 40% um, experience sexual harassment. So it's it's a really serious need that we have here on our campus. And we're hoping that this website could address it. So um, essentially what we're doing is, Saru and WGMC has been working on the blog. And I, I if I'm understanding correctly, I feel like last time there were some issues with security around the blog. So we have, let me see if I can go to the blog section really quick. Okay, so obviously it's not really well, it's not um, completely finished yet, but we have, the way we're doing security is there's gonna be reviewers for each blog post. Um, each blog will be anon anonymous. And those reviewers are gonna be sourced from the Saru hotline. Um, so these people are trained in hearing these type of stories and also in setting up boundaries for themselves and to ensure that there's no burnout. Um, and in order to make a blog post, you have to exclude any identifying information. So this includes your name and includes the perpetrator's name and any organization that they may be attached to. Um, and to ensure that that does happen, we have these reviewers who are going to read through each blog post and, you know, kind of flag each one that has, before they're published, flag each one and contact the person who wrote it. Um, to then remove that identifying information. So that's how we're kind of beefing up the security. Um, we met with OIE about triggering investigations and any form of, you know, impedance that having this blog post may have on investigations. And they, ensure that, they assured us that like, there's gonna be no issues with the blog um, and not disclosing any like names, addresses and um, like location of like where the, violence occurred um, will not trigger any form of basically investigation and if it does it can't really go anywhere so survivors are protected and there's no chance of like retaliation or anything um, so hopefully that addresses some of the concerns and the blog I, i'm screen sharing actually the preview of the website um, another key component is the survivor map which you may have seen before 
But the survivor map is essentially just shows, um, it gives survivors, I don't know if you could see this. Um, anyways, but it's basically a way to get some resources that are necessary for survivors here on campus. And then, oh, shoot, sorry. <laughs> sorry, sorry, sorry. And then finally, oh gosh, okay. Finally, there's the sex education, um, which isn't completely finished, um, but it's gonna contain information about um, what are healthy relationships. Um, here, this one is reproductive anatomy and physiology. Um, we're trying to keep it inclusive for all genders and sexualities. There's gonna be a section we're collaborating with, as I mentioned earlier, LGBTQ life, um, to make sure everything is as inclusive as possible. So that's kind of the scope of everything. I'm not sure if there's any questions or any concerns that I could address now. Um, if anyone wants to motion for like a three minute Q and A, um, we can do that now or like a two minute Q and A. Motion for a three minute Q and A, 45 second speaking times. Could I get a second? Okay. All in favor of a three minute Q&A with 45 second speaking times, please go to the reaction tab and hit the raise hand feature. All right, we're now in a three minute Q&A with 45 second speaking times. Um, Kobe, the floor is yours. If you would like to be added to the speakers list, then please keep your hand raised. If you would not, then please do lower your hand. Um, so a question I have is, are the people who are reviewing um, the submissions, are they mandated reporters? Like if somebody submits a, a blog post and they do have identifying factors, can the person who reviews it do, would they go to somebody if this is kind of a case that hasn't been presented to OIE before? Sorry if yeah. that didn't make any sense. No, 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 that makes perfect sense. And I understand the concern, but um, as I mentioned, we're using reviewers from the hotline. Um, and part of being on the hotline, being an active member on the hotline is that you cannot be a mandated reporter. So an RA or an acceptable, any other classification. Um, so reviewers themselves are not mandated reporters. And that's something that we're gonna make sure won't happen. Um, this is uh, the review, the whole purpose of the reviewers is to ensure that there's no trigger of an investigation and that any information that is in the blog post does not necessitate a report by a mandated reporter. So, no. <laughs> um, okay, next we have Sam. Cool, thanks. Yeah, just, um, I guess the first one, I have a few, but we'll see how much time I have. Uh, so one concern I think we had last time was that, you know, obviously the people that worked on the website this year um, would be active in maintaining it. But what, I, I guess, plans are in place to make sure that this, uh, this doesn't kind of, you know, like get created, have a bunch of resources, and then sort of like atrophy over the years as people who originally worked on it graduate? Yeah. Yeah. And that's a serious concern that we've had too, and we've discussed. Um, the first kind of major like safeguard is that this program is a collaboration amongst um, different administration organizations. So CHU is, is the primary one and LGBTQ life. Um, so Elise is there, Elise is the, our, our co-director, I mean, our director for um, SARU. And also part of the process is that we as co-directors and the people involved in making this website are recruiting, um, future eboard members to make sure that the website is a top priority for coming years. For example, like for in Saru's perspective, um, our future co-directors, um, Eleanor, I'm not sure if everybody's familiar, Eleanor and Erica um, are very involved in this website. And it's part of our, essentially it's almost like an eboard position to be able to follow this website and make sure that it remains up to date. 
yeah, and other student organizations involved, such as ARSH, are also involved in that same practice um, to promote sustainability. Sustainability is like the biggest thing for us. All right, cool, thanks. Yeah, uh, my next question, Mahek, stop me if I run out of time uh, or if I'm already out of time, uh, but is, <laughs> uh, so where is this website going to be? If this is uh, partnered with administrators, is this gonna be kind of like within the official JHC website sort of framework? Or is this just going to be out there in the internet and people could get to it through like an Instagram account link or something? Or where, where actually is this going to exist? Yeah, so the domain we purchased basically, it's paid by Chu, um, a Wix like domain name basically. Um, and that website, it's, it's essentially, it's almost separate from administration, but um, we've gone through all the safeguards and we've talked to we've ensured there's potential like sufficient collaboration where it would be um promotable on like the chew website for example um and promotable in different forms and different websites it's not going to be a tab in for example if you go to the chew like um page but it will definitely be a resource that they offer essentially yeah all right, we're going to have Talal and then JJ and then our Mater Caucus will have expired. Hey, um, I really respect what you're doing here. I think it's um, I think it's really good that this is being put in place. Uh, a question I had, though, also had to do with the reviewers. Um, so are they are these students or not students at Hopkins? Yeah, they're students. Okay. Um, they're hotline members. I, I could explain a little bit um, since there's some questions on that. Um, hotline members for the SARU hotline go a semester long program or training session that was actually first created by like RAIN operators and through their hotline. So it's like a very intensive and, um, and very careful vetting process almost, um, to make sure that these people, like the hotline responders are like as up to date and as, um, skillful in handling these conversations in person. Um, and after they undergo training, they, they then do an exit interview, which is almost like a final exam, you could say, um, to ensure that they really understood all the nuances of, um, you know, recovering and healing from sexual violence and how to have these type of conversations. But yes, they are students. Sorry. <laughs> okay. Yeah. I think my only concern was just sort of like a privacy, privacy thing. Like if I was a survivor and I was to share like my personal experience, you know, I I'd want to make sure it wouldn't just go to some student who could like maybe just turn around and like tell their friend or something. But you know, if they're going through extensive training, then that's sort of unlikely to happen. Uh, do they? I'm not like a lawyer or anything, but do they sign any sort of like sign anything that's saying that, that they can't share any of this information? Um, not technically, and it's interesting that you bring that up because the hotline does have like some very like nuanced legal issues. Or not issues, but very nuanced legal things. But um, the hotline is a private hotline, um, and these hotline responders who are recruited as um, reviewers have been on the hotline for you know many many semesters, and that involves multiple shifts a month that are seventy two hours long, where they could have. Um, I mean, I've personally had a shift which was like up to five conversations. Um, so it's. This group of people are those who are probably out of all the student population, the most prepared to have this type of conversation. Um, yeah, the only, I will just mention, the only instance where even students and everyone in Maryland is a mandated reporter is if it's like a vulnerable population such as like child abuse or like elder related abuse. Um, but that, that's something that we could say um, and have broadcast on our site to ensure that people are cautious and aware. Thank you. Yeah. All right, go ahead, JJ. Um, so this is kind of related to a previous question about uh, whether or not this is connected to the XHU website. So one thing I'm slightly concerned is do students, uh, like is it, accessible only to students? Like, can I use this website to report uh, only if I'm a Hopkins student? And if so, do I need to log in or anything like that? 
because um, one concern is if there's any data obtained from it that we want to raise to a higher level. For example, for now, it has to go through the campus group. Um, so there, there has to be some sort of verification and login process. And I'm just wondering if this website can do something like that. Um, to my knowledge, I'm, I'm honestly not completely sure. I know for the blog, um, the whole purpose of the blog is so that survivors can post their stories. And a really uniquely to like healing from trauma and healing, especially from sexual trauma is the lack of autonomy and control. Um, and the hope for this website and like what it's, why it was created was to kind of give survivors and like, yeah, survivors of sexual violence of having their control and having their power taken to be able to express their stories. So um, we're not planning on using this website for any form of data collection. Um, it's really supposed to be a space, a community for survivors to come together and be able to, you know, say things that they wouldn't be able to to their friends and um, things that are, are, you know, so personal and so a moment of like vulnerability. Um, so to make a blog, you do have to put in like, for example, your email information. Um, but this is primarily for like, if you do include, um, I like identifiable information, we need a way for reviewers to contact you and say, Hey, you need to make these changes to ensure like all identities are protected in this post essentially. I hope that answered the question. <laughs> All right, thank you guys. Um, <coughs> the moderate caucus has expired, so we're going to have to move on unless someone wants to motion to extend it. I motion to extend it by um, another yeah. minute and a half, 45 seconds speaking times. Do I have a second? Second. Okay, all in favor of extending the Q&A, um, please go to the reaction tab and hit the raise hand feature. If you're abstaining or voting against them, please privately message me. Can everyone please vote? All right, we have now extended the Q&A and the floor is yours, uh, Ben. Is there a system in place to delete blog posts if, um, by the user who posted them if they decide that they no longer want whatever they posted to be public? Because from what I see, um, it's not like an account-based system where you can verify that it was you and you can take down your own post. Um, so do you have a plan in place if somebody decides that they, what they had previously posted they didn't want up there anymore? Um, I'm glad you bring that up. Yeah, I, I will emphasize again, um, the blog is to give a space for survivors and we do not want to overstep and make it an unsafe environment. I'm actually glad I'm on this page. We do have a contact us section uh, where you create your name, email, and a message. And us as reviewers, we we will check this like all the time. That's the plan. Um, we, we actually created a plan for like shifts. So two people are aware of the blog, like communications. Um, at any given time. And through this, you could contact us and we could remove a blog post if you want it to be removed. So yeah, there are, there are we are very open to communication um, and even beyond the blog, communication for any section on this um, to keep it as updated and as essentially as safe of a space as possible for everyone involved. Thank you. Yeah. All right, um, so we're gonna end the Q&A now um, and then you can continue your presentation, Michael, unless anyone has any more questions. Yes. I have motion to extend it another minute 30. Uh, could I get a second? Second. Okay, all in favor of extending the Q&A, a minute and 30 seconds, please go to the reaction tab and hit the raise hand feature. If you're voting against or um, abstaining, then please privately message me.
can, okay. Um, so we have now extended the Q and A. Um, Kobe, the floor is yours since you motioned or you can um, mo like give your time to someone else. Give my time to Sam. Cool, thanks. I just had a couple. Um, so the first one, just to follow up on uh, the last question, it seems like the answer was yes. Um, but you know, just to be clear, if someone wants to delete their blog post, they can delete their blog post. Uh, and the second question, and uh, you know, it's just yes or no. Um, second question is, what is the WGMC's role currently in the website, and what is it going to be in the future? Uh, yes, for the first one, yes. <laughs> They can delete it if they wanted to. Um, and I guess to address your second one, I, I'm glad that um, we kind of have this part here. Um, WGMC, I, I'm going to kind of read it verbatim from here, but essentially what they're just going to be involved in keeping the information updated, keeping the information, um, especially with the resource map, for example, they were integral in making this um, keeping the resource map updated. Um, and also for members who choose to be involved in like the reviewing process, but, um, and then sharing like blog mate, basically like running the website. Um, but that's gonna be shared amongst the three different student organizations. Um, but yes, it, it, they're essentially, their role is gonna be to be one of the moderators of the website. All right, cool, thanks. Just for your benefit and for the newsletter's benefit, the reason I ask that is that the vote next week, it's not to say you can or can't have the website because you know even without us, we, you can still have the website. It's specifically to authorize the WGMC because they're us um, to work on it. So that's why I asked, uh, but thank you. Yeah, of course, of course, yeah. Would anyone else like to be added to the speakers list? We are on like three seconds. Okay, well, the moderator. Right. Right. Carolyn had a question in the chat that I can just ask. Okay, How often will the blog be updated? Mm. Yeah, um, so kind of what I was alluding to earlier, the way we're structuring reviewers and um, moderators of the website itself, there's going to be two people on, on staff, essentially, um, for designated days. So the blog will be updated. Um, I would say it will take at least 24 hours just to review information and ensure that, you know, there's no identifiers and anything that could instigate a, an investigation, but the blog will be constantly monitored, um, 24 seven, essentially. Awesome. Thank you. Um, so the Q and A has expired now. Um, if anyone has any more questions, you can extend it. If not, then Michael, you can continue your presentation and we can do um, more questions at the end. Okay, I guess we're not extending it. Okay, so yeah, you can continue. Okay, well, I, I honestly don't have much to add. <laughs> um, but I just do want to emphasize, one, the, the purpose of this website is to really address the need that survivors have on campus. Um, I often quote the climate survey from last year, which says 45% um, of survivors of sexual violence do not feel like school administration can help them. Um, and it's like, where do you find help? Like, where do you find community? Um, and we're hoping that this blog can really provide some preventative and also, you know, current like support for survivors and, um, yeah, and I, I just to emphasize a little bit more, um, I mentioned that we're collaborating with Chu, and you can see here that um, Chu, there's a Chu committee lead, for example, who's going to be involved, and they've been integral, integral in like creating this website. Um, so we'll constantly be talking with them, and also constantly be in communication with the Office of Institutional Equity to ensure that anything that we're doing is. Um, you know, up to student conduct, it's up to everything and it's perfectly safe for survivors um, to like the most intense degree. <laughs> and that's, that's all I got. <laughs> Thank you so much um, for presenting. If anyone else wants to motion for anything, you can do so now.
Okay. Um, well, thank you so much. And we really appreciate the time you took out of your day to come and talk to us about this. Um, and we look forward to um, voting on this or voting on WGMC's involvement on this next week. But I'm pretty hopeful. So thank you. Yes, of course, of course. I don't know how SGA works, to be honest, but if anybody has questions, message me. <laughs> but okay, thank you. <laughs> All right, awesome. All right, with that, we're going to go into prospective business because that was the only agenda item we had today. Um, so if anyone has any advancing legislation or announcements they'd like to make, you can just raise your hand and yeah. Um, I have one announcement. So next week, we're thinking we're gonna have the inauguration after GBM. So just be on the lookout for that. If you um, are going to be an SGA next year. Um, also, if you have GBM items for the agenda next week. Um, sorry, I mean in two weeks, I'm getting this messed up. Inauguration will be happening in two weeks. Um, so if you have any GBM or SGA like items that you want to add, um, make sure to get them in by next week. So like, you know, we're not going to like the meeting that we're going to have in two weeks. It's not going to be very long. We're only going to have it to approve Addie's um, SAC. Like, uh, what is it, what is it? Like SGA's like budget, I think. So um, we're gonna have that and then we're gonna have like inauguration and we're gonna get the details figured out with Carolyn. So like next week is kind of your last chance to like submit stuff and get it approved um, or resolutions or anything. So yeah. Um, I don't know if anyone else has any announcements but you can just raise your hand and go ahead. Go ahead, JJ. Um, so this is, uh, this is an announcement for the international students out there. Uh, you probably already saw in the email or in the crowds of email coming in, but just in case you missed it, um, the, since the uh, JHU, most activities will be normal next semester. Um, you know, there will be a lot of students coming into the US from other countries. So uh, even though uh, the U.S. mostly don't recognize foreign vaccine nation, um, JHU said that you don't have to get revaccinated if you are vaccinated somewhere else. So just keep that in mind and um, safe travels if you are traveling um, and if you are a returning student or something. That's it. Um, I think Sam has some more announcements and thank you, JJ. Yeah. So already the, uh, the behavioral health response plan meetings that I've been mentioning for a couple of weeks now. Um, so it, I'm sorry for it getting lost in the, uh, primordial hell week soup. Um, but the last meeting for that, and I know several of you expressed interest is tomorrow from 6 30 PM to 7 30 PM. Uh, I'm going to send that again in the Slack right now before I forget. And, uh, you know, two people can come, maybe even three. I'll say, you know what, come if you, let me know if you want to come, if you want to come. If I get too much interest, then I will come to a decision. Um, but yeah, send that into Slack. Let me know. Thanks. Any other announcements? Happy Blue Jay Tuesday. Okay, we're gonna go into public input period. Is there anyone from the public here today? Okay, I don't think so. Um, so if anyone wants to motion for a close to the meeting, you can do so now. Motion to end the meeting. Second. Okay, all in favor of ending the meeting, please go to the reactions tab and hit the raise hand feature. If you're voting against or if you're abstaining, then you can privately message me. All right, the meeting has come to a close and I'm gonna end the live. 550 and the barber I go to now is like Hello. a solid 60. That is price gouging at its finest. <laughs> Do we have quorum? Um, we have quorum, but there should be more people here. So
so. Um, I got a couple messages uh, when you sent out that message um, about people not being able to come up. There's a couple midterms. Also, Anthony, I can too cook. My boyfriend brought the wrong size pans, and so the butter overflowed. Oh. It is right. Oh, Sam, Sam, there's a physics exam right now, so everyone who's in physics will not be here. So I know Angela is not going to be here either. She sent me an excuse, but I forgot. Yeah, so it's the people that we're in the group chat with, and then I'm pretty sure Veda and Jenny messaged me. I don't know if they messaged anyone else. So okay. I got to pull up Slack really quick before I take attendance. Less people need to take physics. Uh, <laughs> but, okay. <laughs> Um, okay, can we get a motion to start the meeting then? Or should we? Um, so we actually don't have quorum. Oh, we okay. We'll wait a minute. Ireland, I think, or Elena, I think you might have an exam right now. I'm sorry to be the one to tell you. All right, Mariana with the save. And Talal, hello. Did you just take a screenshot of the attendee list? Oh no, I was sending Addy the information for um, the ad, like the ad back period. Well, I just took a screenshot of the attendee list. <laughs> Sam, will you text that to me then so I can reference it against my email for people yeah. who are confused? Okay. And Nanyo is here and should be coming back. Um, and yeah, we could get started then. Could I get a motion to open the meeting? Motion to open the meeting. Can I get a second? Second. Yay, thank you. Okay, everyone, please go to your reactions tab and hit the raise hand feature. If you're in favor of opening a meeting, if you're abstaining or voting against, then please just privately message me. And everyone must vote, please and thank you. We still need like two more votes. Also, a reminder, camera's on, gang. Oh, Sam, great timing. That, but I don't know what just happened there. We were all on the same wavelength. We still need one more vote. Not you, Koki Parker. I'm sorry, you cannot vote. Mar but I appreciate it. Mariano, vote. Okay, yay, okay, well. Ananya for the win, we just have to have her vote, right? Yes. Ananya, vote. Yay, okay, great, now we are in GVM. Thank you guys so much for your contributions. Okay, with that, we're gonna start with um, uh, exec reports. So Sam, take it away. All right, cool, happy Blue Jay Tuesday. Um, thank you to everyone who did not have a physics test today that was able to come. Uh, in terms of stuff for this week, so I sent that email uh, about the Homewood Shoebox Float Parade contest. Uh, if you're a student organization that's thinking about doing it, please do it. You could win $200 and free hats for everyone. And it's a great way to show school spirit. Um, I uh, helped with the academic affairs letter, even though, I mean, that was really all them. Uh, we, I determined the time and date for the tabling event. Um, that is going to be Wednesday the 28th from 3 p.m. to 5 p.m. So I am going to be using my spring break day um, to submit the uh, submit the event request uh, 14 business days in advance. Um, we had the co-chair discussion with uh, interested committee chairs and in internal affairs. Uh, we decided to do, uh, everybody agreed that we should do a vice chair system to replace the current co-chair system we have right now. Um, that legislation is going to be written up this week, probably also tomorrow. Uh, and will be presented next week. Uh, I had the class president meeting. We talked about the need to make sure that everybody is a good role model uh, for their peers in terms of COVID guidelines to ensure that we could have successful class council events. Uh, and we also talked about transition documents. Uh, I sent the attendees of the, um, the roommate selection meeting 
um, to Carolyn. Uh, so I believe that's already scheduled, but I don't remember what the date was. She could uh, update us. And uh, yeah, that's my updates. Thanks. Awesome. Um, I can go next. So since I took one and a half weeks off from SGA, I have no updates. But um, PRDC um, is going to have a meeting next week to elect um, the new chair of it, like the co-chair with me. Um, and yeah, so if you got, and we're also going to be building applications. So if you have any friends who you think would be interested, please tell them to apply. Um, we'll probably have applications open at the end of the semester or the beginning of um, fall semester. Uh, next we have Addie Perlman. Hey, so we're doing our budgeting process for the fall. Um, so that's what we're working on right now. And this is a little bit kind of in the future, but just to kind of go ahead and get the, get it out there, we do have seniors graduating on SAC. So um, there will be positions open for next year. So if you know anyone who would want, who's interested, please let them know that. Um, and then, oh yeah. So um, congratulations to Karen. We had a little transition meeting. She can continue talking about that if she wants to. Um, and let's see. Da -da 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 -da. Um, oh yeah, please order everything that you need like for purchase requests by May 3rd, um, cause you can't put in purchase requests after that. So if anyone asks, please keep reminding them about that date. Um, yeah, I think that's it. Thanks. Oh no, it wasn't it. Sorry. Um, also I'll be bringing the, um, <laughs> like the actual document for our, like SGA's budget and everything next week. Just so everyone knows that. So I'll send it out to y'all to review. Thanks. Um, next we have Brianna Soldatelli. Alrighty, so um, I will be meeting with Elena sometime in the upcoming week if we can manage to schedule it to have our transition meeting. And then in addition, I have a meeting with Carolyn coming up to talk about stuff for the next year, um, stuff we can do this year, possible last minute events, anything like that. So if anybody has any input um, about this role or CMC or anything like that, um, just let me know. Thank you, Brianna. Um, next we're going to do um, our All Hat Committee open input period, and we're going to start with our first speaker, Koki Parker. Hi, everybody. Um, I wanted to talk about two issues of, uh, regarding finals. The first one is that um, I know for midterms, a lot of professors didn't offer asynchronous options to international students in different time zones. And I think that that could be an issue because uh, taking exams at odd hours of the night could significantly impact performance. And I think that for final exams, um, there should definitely be at least asynchronous options for international students. And um, the second issue is that uh, I know for a lot of my professors and uh, professors of other students that I know have moved uh, final exams or equivalents uh, to the last week of classes instead of having them on finals week. And I think that that's not ideal because, um, at least for me, having reading week as an extra week of access to university resources and professor guidance while studying really helps uh, cement a semester's worth of learning. And I think that not having reading week could um, really negatively impact student performance on finals. So uh, not to mention that that's time that's already being paid for in terms of tuition and room and board by students and families. Um, so I was hoping that the SGA could uh, bring up these concerns to administration. Um, thanks. <laughs> Thank you so much for speaking. Um, Suba, your hand is raised. Yeah, so um... We can definitely do something about the international student and the not having not having a synchronous exam. But even like before COVID, moving finals or final equivalents to the last week of classes isn't allowed. Um, that's like always been a policy, unless it was like an exam, like a third exam or something for a class. So I would recommend um, you can send a letter to the academic affairs, uh, uh, email to the academic affairs committee or send it to the vice deans because that's already something that shouldn't be allowed. This isn't like a new like COVID procedure. Okay, thank you. Uh, I'm raising hand. Go ahead, Brianna. Um, so I know at least for my orgo class, what my professor did was he said, 
we're not going to have a final exam. Instead, we're just going to have four exams, and the last exam is going to be cumulative, and that's the last week of classes. So that's how they get around the not having a final during finals week. They just don't have a final exam at all, which I'm very annoyed about because I am very bad at orgo, and I would like to spend that whole week studying it. But instead, I have to cram it in around my work schedule and everything because I took off. Um, I took off for reading week because I was like, ah, oh, I'm not going to have any finals before reading week. Um, that'll give me time to study. So yeah, I definitely understand your concern. Thank you for bringing it up. I also see Talal raising his hand, so go ahead. Yeah, um, I'm curious, and I think there, I guess, <clears throat> needs to be a little bit of research done into like the exact um, terms of the policy, because what Brianna is saying, having them calling it an exam or a midterm, but it being cumulative, is the same thing as a final exam. So like I'm so I wonder like if the exact policy states that if something is cumulative, then it can't be um, not in uh, final exam week. Was that question posed to us? It was, it was just like it was posed to anyone who wants who has access to the policy or wants to like double, double check that. Okay, um, if someone comes up with an answer, just drop in the chat um, or you can speak up now. Okay, then we'll just move on to um, our second speaker. I think Joshua, I don't think he's here. So I guess we'll move on to our class council reports. Um, and thank you so much, uh, Koki, for coming and speaking and raising this issue. Um, and yeah, get in touch with Academic Affairs because they'll definitely be interested in working with you on this. Um, all right, so class council reports, we're gonna start with seniors. Yeah, so we are just continuing to wrap up details for commencement slash senior week um, slash putting in like purchase requests and putting things into Hawkins groups. Um, and yeah, that's about it. Thanks, Will. Um, next we have juniors. Hey, y'all. Um, nothing too much. Well, actually, there is quite a bit to report. Um, so our original plan for a paddle boat cruise was um, not approved by senior leadership. So we've defaulted to our backup, which is um, a movie night on Homewood Field. Um, we've got some of the logistics for that figured out, still trying to figure out um, like details specifically in regards to spacing, but it's looking like we can have about 250 people, which is going to be insane, really freaked out about it. Um, so, you know, just the public health communications coming from, from us are going to be really, really important in the coming weeks. Um, otherwise, I think that's about it. Um, yeah, good seeing everyone. Next, we have sophomores. Uh, so yeah, we had a meeting earlier today actually to kind of discuss some of our end of the year plans and how some of that's been changed. So we're just trying to navigate all that. And then I also went to the class president's meeting. All right, and then we have freshmen. Um, so we wrapped up our life design lab event. Uh, it was really nice. Um, not too many people, but to the people who came, it was really good. Uh, we are also currently uh, hosting our art contest for the freshmen, doing voting on our Instagram right now. Uh, other projects future-wise, we want to look into seeing how we can help with the dining transition and also a lot of concerns around the new hypothetical freshman housing policy things. So we're just working on those right now. All right, thank you, Kobe. Um, we're gonna go to committee reports and we're gonna start with academic affairs, Senator Chenda and Senator Zhang. They're both taking physics, um, so they asked me to update. Um, so Academic Affairs had um, helped draft the letter that was sent out about um, professors scheduling work and exams during spring break days, and that went out from the deans to faculty. So if anyone is like still experiencing any of that, please let us know. And then we also had a meeting with um, Dean Martin and Ariane Kelly, so the heads of um, pilot. And so they said that they wanted to work with us and they already kind of like agreed with us and they wanna expand pilot. So expanding for Orgo, expanding for math and other classes as well and expanding it into the summer. 
So they already agreed with our resolutions and we're gonna work with them to help them get the support needed to make it happen over the summer and then into the next semester. So that's us. Thank you, Suba. Um, next we have civic engagement, Senator Wang. I'm here to speak for Grace uh, since she couldn't make it. Um, so the two big things we had going on was the election, making election day a holiday. We actually had a meeting with admin just earlier today. Um, so right now it looks like we came up with a lot of ideas. So we are going to start working with administrators and people from uh, the different uh, schools at Hopkins to draft a proposal to submit to kind of upper level leadership. And also we are looking into COVID vaccine volunteering to see how members of Hopkins community can get involved in helping uh, get vaccines for Baltimoreans. Thank you, Kobe. Um, next we have finance, Senator Huff. Hi, um, we're currently just moving into the review of semester allocation. So we will be starting that either probably Thursday. So I'll look forward to that. All groups should be getting their budgets back around end of next month. Hopefully that's our plan, but yeah, thanks. Thank you, Karen. Next, we have health, safety, and sustainability. Senator Chen and Senator Kai. Um, I, I don't think Megan's here, so I'll just do the reporting. Um, we, uh, as we finish the Kahu event, we, we just follow up with the winners and we will be sending out prizes soon as soon as they fill out the FERPA form and all that good stuff. Um, and right now we're just all preparing for the sex week coming up. Um, and as we passed the uh, uh, sex week funding bill last week in the GBM, now we're just scheduling an update meeting with Saru and Chu to uh, keep everyone on the same page uh, with sex week preparation and we'll go forward with that. That's it. Thanks, JJ. Um, next, we have internal affairs, President Cho. Yep, so Sam basically covered what I was gonna say we just met regarding the chair vice chair system and we will be approving the, or looking over the bylaws um, that are proposed. So, yep. Awesome. Um, next we have student org, Senator Kalahoski. Hey all, um, we had a really productive conversation at committee meeting last week about doing climate surveys for orgs that have selective processes to uh, make sure that they are actively taking an implicit bias type trainings and conversations into account uh, and had a pretty extended conversation with Carolyn about this yesterday as well. Um, so that's the big thing that we're working on. Uh, thank you, Ananya. Next we have um, student services, President Singleton. So yeah, so we met Sunday and earlier today, just kind of talking about ongoing projects as well as um, a good point that was brought up about like extending Brody times to be open later. And I think that's actually a good recommendation, especially considering like finals and reading week coming up. So I'll be sending out that email tonight. And uh, I think that's about it. Thank you. Um, all right, next we have caucus reports, the Black Caucus, Senator Ananya. Um, there's nothing to report this week. Awesome. Um, next, we have the Hispanic slash Lion X Caucus, Executive Secretary Soldatelli. If you are in the caucus, please check your messages. I'm trying to schedule a meeting, same as last week. All right. Next, we have the Women and Gender Minorities Caucus, Senator Reaver. Yeah, we haven't met, but we finished the pronouns resolution, which we're hopefully going to present next week. And we have a presentation tonight about the sexual violence resource website. So that'll be exciting. Awesome. Um, all right. And then last but not least, we have our advisor report. Hey, everyone. I have two updates. Um, the leadership award ceremony is on Tuesday, April 27th at 7 p.m. Um, SGA sponsors several awards. So we would love it if you all were in attendance to applaud people when they receive their awards. Um, and the last thing is just a reminder, I know someone is gonna be coordinating this for each class, but you all have some big events coming up in the next several weeks. And I think it's important that you all are supporting each other. Um, so make sure that you are clearing your schedules so that you can be present and helping out. 
Um, we know that there is a lot more that goes into managing an event during the pandemic. So um, just want you to know that if you know, if you know your council is gonna need help, make sure you're ready to help other councils as well. And I'm really looking forward to these events at the end of the semester. So yeah, that's it. Thank you, Carolyn. Um, okay, um, we're gonna go to new business. The first thing we have on our agenda is the WGMC um, and SARU website presentation. Um, I think the SARU director is here to present. Is it Michael Vito or Mish? I don't know if I'm- Yeah, so it's Michael uh, Vidal. Uh, he is not here yet. Um, I will attempt to resolve that. Um, but in the meantime, I'll explain why uh, we're doing this. Um, so as you all might remember last semester, um, we had a similar presentation uh, of this website, uh, and then we considered a bill to officially sponsor it. Uh, we didn't end up sponsoring it at that time because there were various issues, um, but we are now redoing that. Um, so that bill is planned to be presented next week, but we figured that it would make, make sense to present the website this week in order to ensure that, um, in order to ensure that, you know, there's no issues that we just find out about that might cause an issue next week. We want to make sure that we find that out now. Um, so again, the other reason we're having this is according to our bylaws, uh, for the caucus rules in order, you know, essentially for a caucus to officially sponsor something, since a caucus is part of SGA, SGA needs to vote to approve it. Um, so that's why this is happening. Um, so Michael is not here right now. Um, might be good to motion for a three minute recess, uh, <laughs> while we get him in the call and hopefully, yeah. Hopefully we could get him in here and get this presentation. Motion for a three minute recess. I got a second. Okay. All in favor of a three minute recess, please go to the reaction tab and hit the raise hand feature. If you're voting against or if you're abstaining, then please privately message me. One more person needs to vote. Awesome. All right. We are now in a three minute recess. It is right now about to become 825. So we'll give it until 828. Um, and I'm going to end the, I'm going to stop the Facebook live.